a KACV production. The following program has been made possible by these friends in celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Suzuki program at Amarillo College. In 1976, when AC agreed to house the Suzuki program, there were about 15 students and two music teachers. That partnership has thrived for two decades, and today hundreds of children have been nurtured by the Suzuki method of talent education. I do believe that everybody can play and can fall in love with music. It's, it's just a wonderful gift to have as part of your soul, uh, have that, the gift of music. And I think when you can communicate with someone you don't even know that way, it's um, very special in this day and age particularly. Music is universal because it's the same in every country. And Suzuki has said that music might bring peace to the world. Within the first year of life, children of all nationalities have the amazing ability to break the complicated code we know as language, putting together small units of sound to create words. Experts say by the age of two, toddlers produce about 200 words. By six, they know 14,000. So if children learn to speak words long before they can read them, surely they can also learn to play music long before they can read notes. That realization came in the early 1930s to Dr. Shinichi Suzuki, the son of a Japanese violin maker. And by the end of World War II, he had made talent education for young children his life's work. Uh, Dr. Suzuki has, has this uh, wonderful love for children because uh, at the end of World War II, he saw how devastated uh, families and children were and that's when he picked up the idea of teaching violin. He started with one little student with a little violin, and then it grew from there because he realized the need for beauty in children's lives. Suzuki had a, a discovery in his life, uh, in his 30s, that um, children learn to speak by what they hear. You know, they learn to speak up. If they live in Finland, they speak that language. If they live in Germany, they speak German because of what they hear. They don't learn to read it first. And uh, when he put this in, in to the context of music, he realized that we weren't doing that. We were you know, saying, look here, hold this violin and bow, and here's a book of music, and if you're gonna do this, you have to do the following things. His first great aha was that music is a foreign language like any other foreign language. Everybody learns a foreign language. Everybody learns their mother tongue. And you don't learn it by reading. You learn it by hearing the same thing over and over and over again. I've heard him call the genius of simplicity because he took so many things away from the process and made it complicated. For one thing, we start the children at a very young age, from age two to five maybe. Listening to music is one of the key factors with the Suzuki Method, and it's very important that the children start a daily routine of listening, um, even Suzuki says before they're born. The Suzuki Method is based on a precept that they learn from listening to music the same as they learned to speak by uh, listening to the family speak at home. We call this the mother tongue method. Repetition is one of the key factors also in the Suzuki movement. Uh, Suzuki has gone back to the idea of the more we repeat things, the more we develop our memory cells to learn quickly and to uh, memorize. And so this was a method I think that was thrown out many years in the public schools and now it's coming back 
we find that the children who memorize everything that they do learn more quickly. Another difference is that we delay reading and that's so that we can teach them the technical skills of the instrument before we have their eyes focus on a printed page. That way they can learn to play real well and then learn to read. Suzuki is, is uh, used this method first with violin and piano, but now it's flute and, and uh, uh, guitar and string bass and harp, so those are string instruments, but it also works with mathematics and chemistry and kanji, the Japanese writing. Okay, We have four variations and the theme on Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And every child learns this. This is their beginning steps. All kids move fast. Anybody who has a child knows that you're always running after them. And so with Suzuki, they don't learn to do anything slow, some of them for a year. Everything is fast because that's the way the children's, you know, the children function. We start them from the beginning using the fast rhythm with the fast bow strokes because children's heartbeats are faster than adults. Children move quickly, children respond quickly, and the old traditional way saddled us with playing long, long bows and long notes, which the children's motor skills were not ready for. With a traditional reading method, you can't really start before age six or seven, and the child has lost so much of that absorption factor, I guess you could call it, uh, when they're young, they just are sponges. They absorb everything, and they're so eager to learn. And I always had felt if you could get a child at that age to start learning about music, just listening and, and hearing and enjoying music, then they're going to enjoy it their entire life. The best way to instill something in your child is to model it, is to emulate it. I mean, to really believe it yourself. My husband, Scott, and I have five children, and they all are involved in the Suzuki method. We started Suzuki in kind of a roundabout way. We happened to be over a friend's house, and when we were leaving, this little girl was sort of dancing along the key. She just looked like she loved it, and I said, Boy, your daughter really likes this. And so she was sharing a little bit about Suzuki. I'd never heard of Suzuki. And, but I saw the delight, and you know, being a homeschooler myself, I sort of teach that way, delight-directed education, and so I find if you find something that they really like, they're, they're more apt to want to do it. So anyway, we began, not really knowing what we were doing, and I could not believe it. It was as if something awakened, especially with Sean. He was the first one, he's our third, and he kind of came awake. He was always kind of, kind, of, kind of sleepy, you know, and all of a sudden, he just sort of came awake. How many hours a day do you practice? You think? Usually an hour, but if I miss a day, I usually practice a little bit over two hours. Most kids your age would think, yuck, that much practice. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, I like the violin, I like the instrument I'm playing. Of course, you do have some involvement in reading music. You do read music, but I like it where you can memorize and memorize your songs so that you don't have to always look at them. Actually, this is not my idea at all. It's, it's theirs, and uh, that's why we do it, and that's why we're so committed to it, because they're so committed to it. One of the important parts of the Suzuki method is the involvement of the mother. First of all, she creates a good living environment at home with an opportunity to listen to tapes and an opportunity to work with her child on the points that the teacher worked on at the lesson. And in fact, she's the teacher at home. I even video their lessons because a lot of times we miss something. I write notes, but it's still not the same. 
but something about going there and uh, being able to see what the teacher really, really is getting at, what happens then you have perfect practice. And so I think that's why you progress so quickly, because you are doing the right thing over and over. Suzuki is uh, very adamant about practicing. And one of his famous phrases is, practice only on the days you eat. And that gets the point across to children more than anything. And so the mother completes our triangle, mother, teacher and student. I think with a big family, and even though I homeschool and I'm home with them, I, I think that's one of the hard things is that you really don't have a lot of individual time with each of your children. So um, I, I, I kind of purpose to think that way, especially a couple of years ago when I would think of all that I had to do and I had to sit down, and, but I would close these doors over here and I would sit down and I would say, well, this is my date with Brianna, or this is my date with Eric. And I would tell the children, I said, listen, this is a time where you have me completely to yourself. No one else can interrupt us. I said, this is a really neat opportunity. In the beginning, each parent takes a class where they play the violin. And the beauty of that approach is that, you, number one, you learn the violin, you learn how hard it is to play the violin. <laughs> that you're not expecting something out of your child that's just a piece of cake. The second value in doing, uh, in taking this initial class is that your child passes you up in such a hurry that it gives them a real shot in the arm. They, they can see I can play better than mom. That is just great. I think I got through half of book two, <laughs> a year and a half of, of parents' classes, by which time Alicia was two books ahead of me and, <laughs> and uh, uh, whipping right along, and I was kind of still struggling. The child looks up to the parent so much at that age and looks for approval from the parent, looks for guidance from the parent. And the parent, by being involved, can see the day-by-day -day progress that the, that the child makes and is a part of it. It becomes a special activity that the two of them can share together. It's just a lot of fun to be doing something with your child and be doing it with them every day and you know what they're doing and um, it gives you a special relationship with them. When everything is working as it should, the parent is very positive, is always pointing out the things the child did right rather than the things the child did wrong. The child is developing a good self-concept, uh, is feeling good about what they're accomplishing. At the same time, they don't realize just how incredible it is what they're learning. A child has no idea what is difficult and what isn't, and if we can encourage them to do their best, to do the very best they can, how much further they'll, they'll go in everything that they do. I have two children. I have a son, John, who is 11 now, and a daughter, Anne Marie, who is seven. And John started in the Suzuki program when he was two and a half years old, and Anne Marie was not quite three when she started. John has been playing the violin really his whole life then and, and it's been really fascinating to see him grow up with it and see his progress with it. In the beginning stages you're mainly listening to the tapes and uh, he plays with it, he played with a little box and he was so excited when he finally got to have a real violin. It was a little bitty one, one sixteenth size and when he actually made a sound he was so excited I can remember the look on his face. For a year, he was just working on that first piece and listening and learning things like that. And, it, and you couldn't really tell what was happening. But after about a year, when he learned his first piece, then he just took off. What was really interesting was to see how our daughter then uh, absorbed so much of what happened. By the time she was 18 months old, she could sing many of these complicated pieces that, that John was already playing on the violin and uh, we would go into her room, she was in her crib, and she'd be singing the Vivaldi A minor concerto for violin in tune with the right notes and the right rhythms. It, it was just fascinating. Well, my daughter Diana began taking violin lessons from Suzanne Grooms when she was two and a half years old. And so Diana continued on uh, through elementary school, junior high, high school, and then in college, she studied violin, did a senior recital, and still plays her violin. It still means a great deal to her. In the early years, 
it gave her something that was especially hers. It gave her uh, a niche. She could play the violin, and usually she could play it better <laughs> than other people. So part of her definition was this. We used to laugh and say Diana thought that the violin was just an extension of her arm. If I had to pick the most important benefit from the Suzuki experience for Diana, I would, uh, I would say it was, was in her emotional life. Uh, there have been some times, as you have, um, as every child has, when there have been very difficult situations, periods of mourning, and the violin has been Diana's. Uh, uh, it has been her blanket, <laughs> her uh, place to go to seek solace. Well, Alicia, all her life has been interested in music. I mean, some of her first words were "Valdi Four Seasons," and when we were, she was three. A friend of ours from church invited her to a play, and this was a much older girl of five, and she'd been in the program for a year and a half or so. So we went to this play in, which is a Saturday morning event where all the students in the program come together on the stage at Amarillo College and play, and they play what they can play, and what they can't play, they sit down and listen to. Well, Alicia sat there listening to this. And we got in the car, and she just was devastated. And she just kept saying, I want a violin, I want a violin, I want a violin. The first memory I have was playing on a margarine container, or margarine box, with a ruler taped to it. And I remember Mrs. Delabertone, who was my teacher at the time, um, telling me what a beautiful tone I produced. And I was three, so I didn't know the difference. We got a violin, and we got the tape. And when she first got the violin, we put on that tape, she stood there holding that violin, this little three-year-old, and just played to the, through the whole tape, through a whole half hour, just standing like that. I mean, I absolutely love the violin, and I love music in general. Um, it's amazing to me how many people don't know the value of classical music, and I'm so grateful that I do. There's so much that it teaches. Amarillo College has always had the attitude of being very involved in the community. Part of our uh, Vision 2000 plan that we have as a college is that we should serve as a cultural center for Amarillo. And this is just one of the ways that we are able to achieve that goal by inviting a program such as the Suzuki program to come in to use our facilities. Students are coming to our campus every week, young students who might potentially someday be Amarillo College students. Our program is a team effort. We have wonderful teachers that are willing to give their time. It really is a, a teamwork of love because we love this program and we love the children we're working with and we see the benefits that it brings to the children and their parents and it's um, something that we do because we enjoy doing it. Can you talk to them about the Ticato, how they can make it continue to ring and use the rod? Okay, well, if you elaborate. Our older students are our role models for the younger students, and we're constantly using them as role models. So not only are they perfecting and honing in on their own skills, they are also learning to be role models and learning to play um, alone so that they can audition, like for the symphony, audition for different um, competitions, and they're not afraid to play alone. We have um, had several camps down in the Cedar Canyon, and it has been a lot of fun. This is like a little mini institute, and we try to encourage all of our children to go if possible. We have a private lesson for the children, we have a small group lesson, and then we have a large group lesson. And we try to give them as much enrichment as possible. He's a wonderful man. So when you, whenever you play his music, I want you to think about what it was like in his time. 
A typical concert that he would have played would have included solo Bach with piano. This past year, we invited Brian Lewis. He is a concert violinist who just graduated from Juilliard with his master's degree. He grew up in the Suzuki Method in Ottawa, Kansas. His mother is a very famous Suzuki teacher, um, and we were very fortunate to get him. Once a year, we invite all the children in our program to perform on a large recital. And normally, it, it would be just a violin recital or just a cello recital. This year, we invited violin, cello, and viola all to be on stage at the same time. And the recital went so well and was so well received by the parents that they've asked us to use this format again. And then we also have chamber music, which is wonderful for our advanced students. They're encouraged daily to compete with themselves. Do I play better than I did yesterday? Do I play better, better than I did a month ago? And if the children keep that attitude and they practice very hard and listen very well, then they will become good players that are able or capable of auditioning and doing well. Since I've been teaching Suzuki, I've had a great satisfaction in teaching because the results seem to be so good. We are extremely fortunate in the teachers that we have here. Uh, Suzanne Grooms was among the first group of teachers who went from the United States to Japan. She went with the teachers who originated this program, John Kendall at Southern Illinois and William Starr from uh, the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. I had a lot of access to Dr. Suzuki that way. Um, I was in a third of that group that went to Japan, that got to go to his hometown, Matsumoto. And we were able to go to his home, and uh, we just had tremendous access to him. He's a very, uh, very kind person, very, very motivated towards his single goal of providing world peace through music. Nobody is more interested in developing children into good, happy persons. But Suzuki believes that all children can learn, and he's shown this by adapting the violin to uh, different situations, like a girl that had no index finger and a girl that had to switch sides because her, her, her left hand had been sort of paralyzed and it would be better as, in a bow position. Those children are not going to be concert artists, but they, they achieve something that will mean a lot to them. He's not interested in producing professional artists, but he wants them to develop a sensitivity to music and an appreciation of good music and just to be well-rounded persons. He has great respect for the human being. And uh, we're tr we try our best to teach students to uh, respect their parents and vice versa, and to uh, have the discipline such that uh, provides them with a good life. And that's, he means nurtured with more than just technique, but nurtured with, by the love of all those around them. The Suzuki experience, I would say, has tended to make me approach my children and other children and students in general in a little different way. I wanted to teach, but um, I 
was caught up in the old way, and I think that's a fair thing to say. And when I met him and saw his vision, it's not something I live with every day because I've not been able to do it in the way I think I should. It's very simple and it's very focused, and you know, our lives get to where we get so busy, it's, it's hard to remember those things sometimes, but it's meant a great deal. It's given me a real purpose. It's um, made it possible for me to reach out to a lot of children, and uh, it's, it's enriched it immeasurably. This magic of relationship between the teacher and the student uh, is, maybe it can be learned and taught, but I think we're very fortunate in having that uh, with our teachers who brought this method to Amarillo. The students that are in our Suzuki program are the future of the arts in Amarillo. They are the students who will probably be the leaders of our arts entities in the future, regardless of whether they become performers themselves. Whatever occupation they go into, it's our hope that they will develop a love for music that will last their entire life. I think music is for a lifetime. And if I can bring a student up to the level where he or she can enjoy playing in an orchestra or in a quartet or an ensemble of some kind, I feel as if I've really contributed to that student's life. This program has been made possible by these friends in celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Suzuki program at Air.
Marlowe College.